on the track now with a qualification attempt at Indianapolis, the number 91 car driven by Scott Brayton, who in 1985 held a one-lap record here. He completed his first lap at 213.716 miles an hour. He is on lap number two right now. Of course, there is other motorsports going on in the world at this time. The Formula One are racing in the streets of the picturesque city of Monte Carlo, the Grand Prix of Monaco. And we will have a satellite report on the qualifying there a little later in the day. And a great deal coming up this afternoon on Wide World of Sports. But remember, if it happens here at Indianapolis throughout the afternoon, we will have a report for you. Bobby Unser, Scotty Brayton has completed lap number two at 212.359 miles an hour. He's averaging 213 miles an hour, and at the moment, that is good enough to put him on the outside of the front row. That's right, Paul, and also, Scotty is driving one of the much publicized Buick V6s based on the stock box series, in other words, a push rod engine. And those engines are given 10 more inches of manifold pressure than the other cars, they have a very high straightaway speed. For example, Scotty's been running 224 miles an hour as compared to some of the Cosworths and 219 at the end of the back straightaway. This car is owned by Ron Hemmelgarn. The crew chief, though, is Daryl Soppy, who has quite a few IndyCar wins to his credit. He's certainly capable of getting this car not only in a great qualifying position, but in a position to run well in the race. He has averaged 212.9 miles an hour. 224 miles an hour as he heads into turn three, and his third lap was at 212.680 miles an hour. Very consistent speed going in the back. Well, that shows that he's got it wide open. It is invariant, so that means that Scotty's got it nailed down. Now, he's run faster in practice, like many of the cars here have here today. But, by the same token, it's a good average so far, and I think he'll be well in the field. And the fourth lap complete at 211.750 miles an hour for Scotty Brayton. The four-lap average, 212.6 miles an hour. And that is good enough to put him on the outside of the front row. So Scotty Brayton, for the moment, sits on the front row at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Now, earlier, Derek Daly went out and qualified for the 500. Let's take a look at the last two laps of Derek Daly's run. This is Derek Daly, car number 10. Beginning lap number three right now, Dwayne Sweeney, the starter. He's already completed at this point a lap at 211.9 and a lap at 212.7 miles an hour. Derek Daly has been fairly fast all day. That's a car that had many problems last year with Dennis Firestone, that team. But it's all looks like it's straight and out good now, and Daly's been looking good this whole week. Derek Daly, his practice times, really the top for the month has been at 211 miles an hour, so they've done something with that car. It's working very well. Kim Green is the crew chief and they are now running the car faster than we have any record of their practice throughout the month. Well, I've watched the car run fairly fast at different times. Sometimes they don't get all the practice time, but Derek has always been a fairly good Indianapolis driver. He just needs a good car sometimes. So Derek Daly completes his qualification run lap number three at 213.103 miles an hour. He's moving now, Paul, no question. On the back stretch. Five-eighths of a mile long, 50 feet wide. Hard concrete wall to the outside. 218 miles an hour. That lap down the back straightaway, Paul. Derek Daly now off of the fourth turn. And this was his run for the checkered flag, signifying the end of his four-lap run. The fourth lap at 211.342 miles an hour. And his average... Good enough to put him at the time on the outside of the front row, but he's since been pushed away. Now, let's go down to the pit area. Paul, Derek did have a stand on the front row. You've been bumped to the second row, but I'm sure you're pretty happy with that run. I'm very happy because the change in conditions that were so hard to predict what was going to happen. Um, I expected a second lap to be faster. My third lap was, in fact, my best. But I'm just thankful that Rayner made me go every day between 12 and 3 and not on the happy hour, which I think is a little bit of artificial speed. What kind of speeds do you think we'll see this afternoon? Uh, if Rick, who drew a late number, if he can run after half past five, I'm sure you're going to see him edge back up into the 218s, maybe plus again. Could be interesting. Derek Daly right now on the second row. Paul? 
So we're live now as we watch Poncho Carter. He was the pole sitter here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway in 1985. Certainly looking for his opportunity to perhaps sit on the pole again. The pole, why is it so important? You're on the front row, the inside. The drivers feel it's the key position, but we ask them, why is it? It's a big thing. You kind of try to tell yourself that it's not. You just want to get in the show, but when it comes back right down to it, you want that pole very, very bad. Well, I'd never really thought about it that much until I, you know, got to sit on the pole in 85, and then uh, you realize the importance it is, uh, not so much to the driver himself, because it's always good to let everybody know that you're the, the quickest guy for that particular day, but it's really an incentive uh, to do it to get your sponsor's name in front of the public for two full weeks. And I think the poll is good for one thing, it's good for your sponsors, it's good for the crew, you know, for the morale and all that, but I think it has absolutely no bearing on the race whatsoever. Well, I think it's a good starting position, but I've never won the race starting on the pole, and I've sat on the pole, I think, as much or more than anybody here, but uh, I can't say it's been lucky for me. Well, it's the most important race in the world, and, uh, you know, to be here is already very important, but then to sit on the pole and to start from the front road in, in front of so many people is uh, just something unbelievable. It shows that you have the fastest car, it shows you have uh, an advantage, it shows that you uh, that your team's together and you are too. You prepare the car only to run the fastest, not to run in a race, so it's that important and then it's beautiful to start the race with clean air in front of you. You get to walk around, stepping a little higher I guess, you know, for for two weeks before the race starts and everything can change on race day you know it can be totally different but it's uh it's very important you know as far as uh, as any of the other races go this one is the important one to be on the pole so the pole position worth over seventy five thousand dollars to the man who may win it this afternoon someone definitely will be sitting on that position when this day is done in indianapolis so far 12 drivers in the 71 race history of Indianapolis have won from the pole. Well, it's obvious. This is the place where we have a contest. The contest is speed, so setting on the pole is always important. We have a man on the track right now that knows how to set on the pole that's exceptionally good in the Indianapolis type races. And the course, in Indianapolis are all the fast races. That's Pancho Carter. Pancho Carter, the machine is an 88 mark. It is powered by a Buick V6. He is trying to make his way into his 15th Indianapolis 500 on the backstretch on the first lap of his qualification run. He lives not far from the speedway here in Brownsburg, Indiana. Remember, oh, a little wobble as he came off of that turn. Oh, buddy. he did. Remember now, it's been rumored that these Buick engines, the V6s, the stock block types, pull in excess of 800 horsepower. Now, that's a lot of horsepower here. So Pancho Carter roaring down the main straightaway now. He has completed his first lap of his four-lap qualification attempt at 207.833 miles an hour. I'm sure the crew isn't going to be happy with that. They practiced yesterday above 212 miles an hour. The Buicks, for some reason or another, have been up and down. We've watched them all week, and for some reason or another, they've gone really fast, like up to 215. The next day, they seem to be down around 205. So we're not exactly sure what their problem is. Pancho Carter. The car number is 28, works his way around the track. The second V6 machine to attempt to make it into the Indianapolis field. The green flag continues to fly as he flashes across the start-finish line and dives into that first turn. Now, from a driver's point of view, and you'll certainly see this on race day when the onboard cameras are operating here, when they come off of the fourth turn, Bobby, you're really aiming for a spot five-eighths of a mile away that's only a couple of feet wide and that, very hard to see. Yes, it is very hard to see. You notice they all get really close to the walls, especially now coming off of turn four and turn two. That's the entrance on the long straightaways. And what you do is you want the car to be free as it comes off the turns. If the guy were to run a little bit lower there, he would be doing what we call binding the car, cutting off a little bit of speed. So what you can gain right there, you can definitely expect at the other end to be a little bit faster. The yellow flag indicates that they have decided it is not fast enough. Two laps at 207.8 miles an hour. The crew says, nope, we can do it better than that. So they're going to wave that car off. Well, that's pretty much in line with what we've been guessing. Uh, not Just not quite fast enough. So Pancho Carter waves off of his qualification attempt. He will have two more attempts this afternoon at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway.